Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Now this is the first of my 30 days of 30 minute rows and due to technical issues I'm having to record this one as though it's live but it's not actually live. Okay, The only way really to get this out on day one is to do it this way so apologies for the fact that A is not live and B there's no graphics on screen or anything for today's row. I'll try and get it fixed for day two. But what we're doing today for our 30 minutes is we're going to row three minutes at 24 strokes a minute and at 2k plus 12 pace. And then we're going to do three minutes at 20 strokes a minute and 2k plus 18 pace. So you're going to go kind of slightly faster, then you're going to ease off and slightly faster, ease off. And you just keep on doing that over the half hour. Okay, so it's a simple row, but um, hopefully breaking it into these three minute chunks will make it something that is a little bit easier for you to get through from a mental point of view if you're not used to rowing 30 minutes minute sessions okay now i'll talk more about the point behind this um as we get into the main row but for the time being let's get into a four minute warm-up now if you're using the erg zone app to do all of these then you will find under the ra uh, icon track thing that i have a four minute warm-up in there that you can just load up onto your system i recommend uh bookmarking that so that each time we do this you can just come back to load up that four minutes the same with the cool down there's a two minute cool down at the end as well but you will find the main um row for today is set as RA and uh, I think I've called it 30 slash 30 dash one because it's day one of the 30 30s. Okay so you're going to load up a four minute warm up and then the 30 minute session and then a two minute cool down and the point behind this is that it means that those 30 minute rows you can then use them and rank them. Okay if I build everything into one session you can't rank that 30 and hey we are all grown ups we all know how to program our monitor. Okay so that's what to do. So four minute warm up first. Hopefully, if you're not been using the ErgZone app, you have programmed that into whatever monitor that you are using, be it a concept two or um, whatever row machine you're on. Because this four minute warm up is gonna be done at around about 18 strokes a minute and the intensity is gonna be enough. That's just a good old push from the legs. But we need to set up our machine first. So please go to your drag factor and set that where you want it to be first. And then go to the monitor and set it at eye height if you can. And finally, your foot stretcher height should be set at a point that allows you to get to the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position. Um, if it's set too high, you might not quite get there. You'll be a bit stuck. Set too low, you might might actually uh, go flying straight past and can hyperextend and stuff. Kind of flip that around. Normally I do the setting up the machine first and then describe what intensity is going to be, but hey. So here we go then. So a four minute warm up. Hopefully you've got it all loaded into your monitor now. I've waffled enough at you that you've got that already. Uh, 18 strokes a minute. Okay, so follow me in three, two, one. Let's go. So like I say, enough of a push from the legs that you can think about the moment your feet press into the machine and the moment that your hands pick up the handle because what you want to do is pick up the handle at the same time that your feet push into the machine and that's how you get the power from your legs into the handle because after all the rowing stroke is all about a push with the legs it's not about pulling with the arms or the hands so try to get that timing right you should feel the surge of power going into the handle and once you've got that timing right you can start to increase the pace that you are rowing at try to get slightly closer to 2k plus 20 pace and that means that if you have a two kilometer time trial that you rode recently, take the resulting time and divide by four. That gives you your average pace to cover 500 meters in your time trial. And that's your 2K training pace. So when I say 2K plus 20, you add 20 seconds on. So if your average time was eight minutes, divide by four is two minutes, add 20 seconds, and that means you would row at two minutes 20 pace with your monitor set to the 500 meter screen. Okay, last stroke here, and then we're gonna put one foot on the floor, continue rowing, and trying to keep your technique okay through this section 
the single leg rowing it's easy to over compress at the front because you've only got one leg strapped in but try to just think about your back going forwards to one o'clock backwards to eleven o'clock swap feet don't worry I know it's you're probably still strapping your feet in and out while I can slip my feet in quite easily because I'm in socks it's not the only reason I row in socks I'll explain at one point just in case you haven't heard me talk about why I row in socks rather than shoes okay both feet in legs straight just row with your back and arms so again you go from one o'clock at the front of the machine and then swing over your hips into the 11 o'clock backward lean and then as you start that swing that's when you pull in the handle right afterwards so back arms arms back one more let's roll to the front of the machine with a forward lean and straight arms and just press out from the front not too powerfully because what I want you to concentrate on is your position straight arms forward lean and holding that as you press out with your legs it's a really important part of the stroke but if you press too hard you'll end up flying backwards so you want to hold this position as you press out from the front here we go it's a nice simple four minute warm up today don't worry you'll get nice and warm as we hit the main session now this is where I normally um, have a quick pause and set my phone and things pop a flash screen and say hey stretch and whatever but we can't do that today because we're doing it live so you'll have to watch me load up today's session which fortunately is sitting there ready to go and then I can recap what we're doing today which is 30 minutes obviously because this is the 30 days of 30 session one but what we're going to do is we're going to do three minutes at 24 strokes a minute and at 2k plus 12 pace followed by 20 strokes a minute at 2k plus 18 pace then we're just going to repeat that until the end of the 30 minutes okay so a little bit fast a little bit easy but it's kind of because of those three minute uh increased efforts this is going to feel more like a mid intensity tier okay so i have a bottom a mid and a top intensity this isn't about your experience it's not like if you're a beginner you only do bottoms it's about intensity so you have a bottom a mid and a top and today it's going to be a mid okay so you're going to have to push a little bit in order to hold your pace um but then hey you don't get anything from just sitting on the couch and doing nothing so anyway i'm gonna have a quick drink apologies if you can hear this i'll move my microphone out of the way i normally dip the microphone you see i'm trying to do that very quiet but who knows if it worked and i got some in my face <laughs> that was silly oh okay then so 30 minutes i'm going to start at that faster 24 strokes a minute and 2k plus 12 pace okay so um let's just kind of hit the ground running on this one okay you ready for this let's go in three two one go <clears throat> right so 24 strokes a minute it's a lovely stroke rate because it's one stroke every two and a half seconds and it's a nice for me even rhythm of drive and return I'm still taking slightly longer over the return but it doesn't feel like I have to slow down at all in order to do so whereas at the lower stroke rates like 20 and 18 you have that time to slow down and think about your body position and the phases of the stroke once you get up to 24 you need to start thinking more fluidly in order to keep the stroke rate up I'll talk about that in a minute So, 
for stroke rate you can just watch me if you're on YouTube just drive when I drive recover when I recover if you are listening to this on the podcast then just follow the whoosh of my flywheel and also my speech pattern is usually quite in time with my stroke rate but hopefully once you get into the swing of these intervals you won't need to actively listen or watch what I'm doing you'll just fall into line with it right so as we I don't have any graphics on screen I have to be more precise about time so 30 seconds to go until the next or the first change when we're going to go down to 20 strokes per minute and 2k plus 18 pace in four three two one here we go then so ease off slower stroke rate and backing right down to 2k plus 18 pace now if you don't have a 2k time that's okay I do recommend doing a 2000 meter time trial so that you have a accurate training time because it's a very effective way to track your progress and also to keep on improving so if you did an 8 minute 2k you would train with your 2 minute 2k training pace and then at the end or after a few weeks you do another 2k time trial and then maybe that time you managed it in 7 minutes and 52 seconds taking 8 seconds off your time so your new training pace would be 158 and suddenly all your sessions are going to be a little bit harder because you're rowing a little bit faster but as a result you then get faster and the next time round maybe you go another 8 seconds faster for your 2k and take another 2 seconds off your training pace so that's kind of how you can use your training pace to have a constant gauge of where you are and increase in your training so you can basically do do the same four week training plan 30 seconds to go same four week training plan and because you're going faster each time it will always be effective for you okay in four three two one here we go 24 strokes a minute 2k plus 12 pace which really just means you need to increase the intensity of your rowing stroke 
do I miss? I think I may have missed the stroke there, sorry. So, for those who don't have a 2K training time, you can use the RPE system rate of perceived effort. The danger is you have to be quite honest about your effort and not just, I don't feel like it today. <laughs> but say these 20 strokes a minute sections at 2k plus 18, they might be five or six out of 10 RPE. So you just think, okay, six out of 10 effort. And then as you increase to 24s, like we are right now, you might be seven to eight out of 10. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but actually you can soon kind of work out what your numbers should be based on what you think your RPE is. So if I thought I was rowing at seven out of 10 and I saw the numbers were showing 155, for this session, then I just make sure and hold 155 every time it came to rowing at 24 strokes per minute. I'll talk more about RPE in a future row in the 3030s. Talking of 30, just under 30 seconds to go. And then we go down to 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 for what should feel like a bit of a rest. Okay, four, three, two, one. I'm back down, 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 pace. So this should feel from an effort point of view that it's reduced. So if you were at seven or eight in the last interval, now you should feel five or six. And the way to change that intensity is about the amount of push that you put into the machine because that power from your legs not only controls the speed the pace that you're rowing at but also it kind of, if you have a good rhythm, it controls your stroke rate as well. So if I push a little softer than before into the machine, my drive speed, the amount of time it takes me to go from front to back will be slightly slower. So a softer push means less power into the machine, slightly slower drive phase. And then if I have a good two to one rhythm where my drive is twice as fast as my recovery, then that should help get that stroke rate down from 24 to 20. 
in the same way that in 40 seconds time when we increase again it's about putting in more of a push from your legs so you'll have a faster drive speed and then a faster recovery too that takes your stroke rate up okay four three two one here we go 2k plus 12 24 strokes per minute so push harder with your legs that will increase your stroke rate the extra power will increase your pace but also you're taking four strokes a minute more than you were before which increases your pace too but it's all very good saying it's about pushing with the legs but maybe some of you sitting there thinking and what about my arms <laughs> that's fair enough you need your arms to work in two ways the first is a conduit of power so that as you push with your legs that power transfers from your legs into the flywheel but then once your legs have run out of power your hands your arms take over and then they pull to add in a wee bit of power so you'll have heard or maybe you've heard some people say that rowing is about pushing and not pulling it's true from the front of the machine but you do still need to pull at the back so push pull push pull push pull and that whole time before I'm saying pull you keep your arms straight don't bend the elbows don't grab and fight arms long and straight all right 20 seconds until we ease off a bit again four three two last one back down to 20s and 2k plus 18 pace and we're halfway there it's the Bon Jovi time and it's easier to think about your arms as we slow down to this rate so you can really think straight pull straight pull straight pull and do take a look at your elbows and try to see if you're bending them early what I mean is that you're grabbing that you kind of pick up the handle by really fighting using your biceps and your shoulders rather than the much bigger muscles from your legs because 
not only are you fighting and not letting that power from your legs go through to the machine when you grab early but you're also wasting potential arm pull like if you look straight arms pull I have the whole range pull of my arms pull when I eventually do pull at the back whereas if I grab at the front I've got like a half thing that I'm doing that then means I'm doing some weird crumple with my stroke to try to get that power in and to be honest I just slowed down by like 7 seconds even though I was trying to put in the same amount of power alright 30 seconds to go until our next change up and so that's what most of technique is about it's about efficiency and getting that power in okay three two one alrighty let's go up to 24s again 2k plus 12 pace should be really familiar now that boost as you increase your speed and stroke rate and again this is where your fluid arms really come into play so you keep them straight and then when you pull in nice and powerfully at the back due to the ligaments and muscles and even your rib cage your arms will want to return slightly forwards again and so you use that natural springiness to start your arm recovery so that as your arms go forwards they trigger the forward lean over your back or over your hips sorry with your back and then by the time your hands are over your knees you're in that forward lean your body weight is on the front of the seat if you have a good primed posture and then all you have to do is bend your knees and you will slide to the front of the machine with very little energy or effort needed to get you to the front but because you're doing it all as a fluid motion you're never stopping which is what helps with the higher stroke rates 30 seconds to go this workout is rattling by it's kind of what I'm hoping to do with most of these 30s is design ways to make them go quickly okay four three two one down to 20s it's got three intervals left now that fluid motion from phase 
to phase of the stroke is just as important on these stroke rates the slower ones because this can be where people become a little bit unstuck let's say because they're not used to taking so much time over the stroke so like I say it's about a 2 to 1 ratio and at 20 strokes a minute that means one second drive and then two seconds recover and you use that two seconds to recover but you're still moving so you don't stop it's not drive for a second hold for a second back for a second which I see quite often so that's not the point the point is to use these lower stroke rates to work on this fluid motion of arms so they go in out and then arms back arms back knees it's all running into each other there's never a point when I am stopped I'm letting my body's momentum take me through the stages of the stroke 30 seconds to go and that's really important for getting power in using your body's momentum and that's why you have the forward lean along with the straight arms three two one here we go the last 24s 2k plus 12 and you lean into the front of the machine and you hold that forward tilt remember it's a tilt over the hips not a crumple you're not collapsing into the front but you hold that position to let the power get into the machine from your legs first and then once your legs are about halfway done that's when you finally swing your upper body over your hips from that forward lean to the backward lean and that swing adds in a lot of power if you switch to the force curve and look at the difference between holding a forward lean and not you're just like this the difference is huge get a nice rising curve if you hold the forward lean then add in your back whereas it's more of a straight line row or force curve sorry if you break your back too soon or swing your back too soon uh, sorry my fluffy bit just fell off my microphone and I got easily distracted <laughs> okay closing in the last 
45 seconds of this interval and then you get a nice active finish for the last three minutes and hopefully if you're not used to rowing 30 minute pieces this one will have eased you nicely into it it's very easy to go too hard on a 30 4 3 2 1 ok back to 20s that's kind of one of my intentions or the reasons why I'm doing this 30 days of 30s is to try to improve my own rows over 30 minutes so what I intend to do or what I'm doing this Sunday anyway is I'm joining up with Fitness Matters who do a 9 o'clock in the morning UK time 30 minute row using the Erg Race app get that the right way around so they use Erg Race for 30 minutes which you're welcome to join in just check out I'll post details of the race to find but I'm going to do that for the four available Sundays across this 30 days of 30s and hopefully by the end of it we'll all have got used to rowing 30 minutes so much that the last one if we do it as a time trial will really do well now that's not to say that I expect people to do all 30 days of these rows you can still just come and go as you please pick and choose what rows you want to do after all 30 days of 30s with no rests is going to push me a bit so I don't want other people to be kind of lulled into thinking you have to do the same if your energy resources dip take a rest day you can always extend into December to finish off all 30 rows if you wish ok, three strokes to go and then we're done with the main session Ooh, there we go ah, I hope you managed to follow along ok and you held your pace on both sets of intervals so the thing about the RPE system is that once you set your pace that you think is 6 out of 10 or 7 out of 10 etc for that row you hold it each time it cops up so even if your effort it's like for me towards the end that 24 strokes a minute felt more like an 8 rather than a 7 because it's just the, after half an hour worth of rowing your body gets tired but you don't even the RPE you don't back off the pace to make it feel like it's only 7 out of 10 again so you just that's the danger of the RPE is it's not you're not meant to change it about within the row I'll explain about it properly at one point don't worry ok I will load up my 2 minute cooldown again do the same if you are using the Erg Zone app hopefully you've bookmarked the 2 minutes and it's sitting there ready for you to go or hopefully I am flanneling enough right now for you to quickly punch 2 minutes in or you can just do a just row um, and just stop and start with me it's the same for all of my sessions to be honest you don't have to unless you want to upload it to logbooks or something you don't have to do it strictly as as I say so 
two minute cooldown, 18 strokes a minute again, probably around about 2k plus 30 pace because we finished nice and slow so we can just use this to slide into neutral. Okay, in three, two, one, go. So again, thank you for bearing with me when it comes to this being slightly less technical than most of my rows. I don't quite know why the stream box wasn't working properly. It was just here. So anyway, so this will be put up as live, even though it wasn't live. And then at least you'll see it and be able to roll along with it. I need to sort out what to do about on-screen graphics for the actual live rows. Because that is the intention, is that all 30 of these are just done live, because frankly it's so much output to make. If I had to put everything through post-production, I'd fall massively behind. And I want to make sure that every day I have the row up. I'll post what the session is for you to do anyway. But if you're looking for the video, I'll try and get up as quick as I can. And then once these 30 days of 30s are finished, normal service will resume. I've got a couple of rows from the 10K plan that I need to re-record. Probably won't get to them until once we finish this 30 days of 30, to be honest, because I don't fancy double <laughs> doubling up one of the days. As it is, tomorrow I've got a, a bike race on Zwift that I need to do. But that's why tomorrow's day two's session is going to be just a standard 30 minutes at 18 strokes per minute. A nice regenerative row early on in the day ready for me to just recover well enough for the bike race in the evening there we go that's the two minute cooldown done so that's basically what we're going to be doing so we'll do the four minute warm-up a 30 minute session and a two minute cooldown and i really do recommend that you find the four minute and the two minutes um sessions on the erg zone app if that's what you use and bookmark them so you can quickly load them up but each time we're going to do one of these rows, that's what we're going to do. So you can kind of get used to just doing four minutes. In fact, if you, if you don't care about ranking the workout, you could just do four minutes, 30 minutes, two minutes with undefined rest in between. Um, and then you just have to press your button to continue to next interval and that will make life simpler. Because as much as I'd love to program into our zone and tell you live exactly how long I'm going to take between <laughs> the warm up and starting the main session, I'm not clairvoyant, I'm afraid. So I, would, I wouldn't know. Hopefully, technically, this is held together. Hopefully, the microphone bit falling off didn't cause too much of a hassle. Um, and hopefully, you just enjoyed the roll along and actually all the bells and whistles that come along with it uh, don't really matter much. It's more about just kind of rolling along and having me wittering away in your ear just to keep you company. Hopefully, just get you through a session that maybe you may have stopped just out of pfft, before, but because you're rolling along with me, you keep going. It's very, that's why the erg race thing is a great idea because you jump on, you do a 30 minutes and you don't want to stop because you see the other like 10, 20, 30, 40 other people that are rowing as well. So you can like, even if you ease off a little bit, but you're not going to stop because other people will go, oh, well, I wonder what happened with them. Anyway, so there we go. We're all done with the 30 days of 30 minutes workout one. I do hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment on, uh, on this video. Just let me know what you thought of it. And even if you want to just give me some friendly abuse for the fact that it is uh, no graphics and stuff. Um, but hey, got to try something different from time to time, don't you? So anyway, thank you so much. Please look after yourself. Stay safe. Be well. Bye-bye.